What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, anyone working with clients one-on-one to stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-on-one client work to -to one-to-many. Actually, the founder today, A. Weber, is one of the tools that we recommend people use because it's not just one-to-one revenue generation, but it's one-to-one lead generation. We find that service professionals are answering questions one-on-one with clients. Instead, they should be onboarding them to some type of autoresponder so that they can answer them virtually and and be free of time. Um, You can go to rise25.com, learn more, and download our free dream product ladder, which basically is a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps in untapped revenue. Companies like Disney, Apple, the sporting industries all use versions of the product ladder. Uh, Go to rise25.com. Today, I'm very excited. We have Tom Colzer, founder of AWeber. They're one of the top email marketing providers on the planet and help well over 100,000 businesses build their audience. They started way back in 1998. And Tom, I've been a customer since I looked, uh, September 2009. So my nine, is that right? Yeah, nine year anniversary is going to be September. So thanks for joining mm-hmm. me, Tom. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being a customer. For yeah, sure. for sure. sure. Talk a little about the culture, right? Because obviously, voted best place to work. What are the things that you do to maintain a great culture? Obviously, food helps. Three chefs help. Food's nice. Um, You know, it's one of those things I often get asked, like, hey, why do you feed everyone every day? And, you know, isn't that expensive? And it's like, yeah, it's expensive. Um, But ultimately, you know, the vast majority of people stay here for lunch every day and they sit with other people to work with. And, you know, the friendships that have been made here, like we've had marriages come out of A. Weber, you mm. know, relationships that are built here. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's like people build, you know, long term friendships and, and uh, um, you know, professional relationships and, and so forth that, that come from just the bonding and the, the networking that goes on across teams. You know, there's collaboration. You, know, you talk about like what features do we build next? It's you know, a product manager happened to sit with somebody, at, you know, from our CS team for lunch who happened to also be sitting next to a person from marketing and engineering. And like while they're spitballing some idea over lunch, you know, they, you know, the engineer says, hey, that would only take like an hour to do. And, right. you know, two or three days later, the engineer just did it as like a little side project of like, hey, I, I, I made that change that we did. Like, what's everybody think of this? And then it goes back and forth in some iteration. And like, you get cool stuff that comes yeah. as a result of yeah. the, that, that collaboration that happens right. there. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're not, there's no walls here. You know, we, we're, we're big on, you know, no doors and, and, you know, open collaboration and communication. Anybody can put anything on my calendar at any point. Um, you know, if you need me in a meeting for something, put it on my calendar. You don't have to ask, you know, there's no permission needed. You know, if you got a question for me, you know, it's actively encouraged. You know, the, the, one of the things that, um, you know, I tell every new hire when they come in is, you know, I actively encourage everyone here to disagree with myself and others because everyone has a different background. Everyone has different skills. You know, we're all experts in, in what it is that we do and, and you're brought on because of that expertise. And just because I or somebody else says something and you disagree with it, if you don't speak up about that, you're doing both yourself a disservice, but you're doing all of our team a disservice and you're doing all of our customers a disservice by not volunteering the knowledge and the expertise that you have. Um, you know, and ultimately like I'm wrong some reasonably large, you know, percentage of the time, like it's not zero. We could ask your wife. She'd probably say that. Yeah. She (laughs) she would probably say the number's even higher than that. Just to say that I'm wrong on whatever percentage I pick. She's awesome. (laughs) Hi, sweetie. (laughs) That's all right. I get that. Um, I'm usually usually wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We're always usually wrong. It's best. You're usually more right if you just accept that you're going to be wrong. (laughs) 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 The, uh, 
Um, you know, but ultimately that communication and that kind of discord and that, you know, disagreement, frankly, like some people kind of can see that as like an argument or like something bad, but like yeah. ultimately we all grow by sharing that expert, excuse me, by sharing that expertise. Um, so that, you know, that's actively encouraged and in an awful lot of companies it's not. Um, yeah. oh, for sure. And I think there's some, I forgot what the book was, but it was saying, there was this one airline that had a lot of crashes and it's because the second in command didn't disagree with what yeah. the, um, the first in command was doing. And so yeah. because they weren't challenging them that they thought something was going wrong, ultimately bad things happen. So yeah, fortunately, most of the time people don't die as a result <laughs> of the decisions that we make here. Fortunately, you probably get calls uh, think you know, that they think they're going to die because they're, <laughs> Their account's oh, yeah. not working or something. I've heard some doozies over the years, but yeah, you know, we, we send a lot of important emails as well, you know, so doing our job very well is, is important. It's, yeah. it's funny you should mention the whole second in command thing. Like I use, I use that as an example all the time around like having, you know, step by step instruction books. It's like, would you rather fly with a pilot that says, I don't need documentation. I'm an expert at what I do. I don't need a checklist for doing this. <laughs> or the pilot that says, I'm really good at what I do. Because I use a checklist right. to make sure that I don't miss steps. Because when I'm ultimately going down through this checklist, the checklist exists because somebody died or got injured or something cost a lot of money in order to get that that particular step on right. the checklist. Right, hundred uh, percent. You know, and and unfortunately, an awful lot of people are programmed to think that like being an expert means you don't use a checklist. Dude, I use checklists all day long, every day. The experts because use the I checklist. Because I don't yeah. mess. I you know I don't mess up when I follow the checklist. 100%. So. Um, Tom, this has been great. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out aweber.com. Um, I had two last questions I always fi uh, finish with. One, um, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been the lowest moment in the journey? Um, and two, what's been one of the proudest moments of the journey? Start off, what's been, when you go back, um, been a lower moment? It could have been early on. Yeah. It could not have been early on. Um, I think anytime you have to let someone go from the team is is a is a really hard moment. Um, you know, and there have been many of those over the years. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not involved in every one of them these days because we've got a great team that you know is is you know responsible for making many of those decisions. Um, but it, even still, like I'm friends with, you know, just about every, like I, you know, I have a relationship with just about everybody that's here, you know, to some degree, you know, I don't hang out with everybody outside of work. Um, but I have a, a, a good working relationship with everybody and I want to see everyone thrive and, and succeed in what it is that they do. So anytime we have to have, you know, let somebody go from the company, it's, it's, it's a tough decision. Like, you know, is it the right thing for the company? Is it the right thing for our customers? Is it the right thing for our team? And is it ultimately the right thing for that team member? Um, because oftentimes people don't make the decision that they need to make themselves. You have to make it for them. Even though they fully recognize it, you know, have to make it for them. And, and that's, that's just a hard conversation to have anytime you have it regardless. Um, you know, some of those have been harder than others. Yeah. You know, but but those, that's, that's probably the hardest thing that I yeah. deal with on you know, a semi-regular basis. And what about um, proudest? One of the proudest uh, moments or milestones? Specific moments. It's so hard to like pick up. Besides a moving really into really long time. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't I know. Think, maybe in your mind when you started the company, you thought one day I'm going to get to X number of customers or X number of whatever. I don't know. Maybe one so, day you'll have a 75,000 square foot building. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Those moments are the those moments. What tend about to be do more, you do any team like retreats or anything or or something involved? With yeah, the, we. we I, I just say it's you know the it's interesting you should say like specific milestones and like growth like those are great to have goals and it's great to actually achieve those but they tend to be the more like fleeting and kind of like ultimately inconsequential moments. You know what I mean? It's like you reach but it like, and then you're like, oh, why? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, we have 10,000 customers. Oh, we have 25. Oh, we have 50,000. Like those are cool. Like don't get me wrong. It's awesome. And I love, you know, every one of our customers that, that helps us, you know, achieve that. You know, ultimately, I think the things that are most meaningful to me, it kind of goes back to like kind of, you know, some of our kind of 
core founding principles to some extent is connecting yeah. people in more yeah. remarkable ways. Talk a ways. little bit about that for a second because I know you guys on the page, you have a set of core values yeah. that you go by. You know, like ultimately for me, it boils down to like connecting people better. Um, and it, you know, the milestones for me and the things that are most memorable for me is like, you know, I had one, we had a finance customer way, uh, you know, way back in the day when we were still really small that, you know, he, the, the founder of that company, when he, when he joined Aweber, it was himself and one other guy. Um, and over the years they grew the company into like 200 plus people. And at one point the, the, the founder who I hadn't really interacted with in quite a while over a number of years, um, he called me up and he's like, Hey, I just wanted to say thank you because like without the email, you know, without doing email and without all the advice and feedback and such that I'd given him and other team members here had given him other areas, he's like, I would never have grown this company to be 200 people. And, you know, like mm. the fact that you like, you have that like impact on not only him and his team, but also on all the customers that they help. They basically helped people get more affordable mortgages. Um, and, 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 and basically it's like, you know, so the, the kind of like the network effect or the kind of knock yeah, on butter, the butterfly, butterfly effect, effect of yeah. like, you know, Hey, I flap over here and like I have this impact on so many different lives yeah. is really cool. You know, like I often get asked like, Hey, why don't you go work for, enter you know, why don't you do a more enterprise product? And it's like, I don't really care for enterprise that much because with small business, I get, you know, I get to talk to folks like you where it's like, I know I get, it's so much more tangible to be able to talk to you and to learn about your business and to learn about the impact that you have on the world versus like going and doing some work for GM. And it's like, yeah, yeah GM touches lots of people, but it's more nebulous. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, yeah. You know, Tom, so it's those customer moments and then it's, and it's just also like team member moments, you know, and the, the fact that like, you know, somebody was able to buy a house or had a new kid, you know, had, had a, you know, new baby or, or whatnot. And, you know, the fact that like they probably wouldn't have done that if they weren't working here because yeah. of the stability of the company and those sort of things. So yeah, it's, it's, totally. it's the personal stuff. Yeah. Tom, thank uh, you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you guys do at AWeber. Everyone should check out AWeber.com. I just want to be the first one, Tom, to thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me on, Jeremy. And as always, I appreciate your business here. <laughs> so it's great. Awesome. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. What do the fuck came out? Back?